Kayvon Thibodeau sat down with Carmelo Anthony and had some interesting words regarding Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley and who should have been paid last offseason first. And I'm going to be honest with you. I am not a fan of Kayvon Thibodeau talking about this stuff on a podcast. We're going to dive into that as well as could Barkley be signing with the Dallas Cowboys in free agency? We'll talk about that coming up around the corner. But first, I got to make sure everybody watching today's show is following me on my new Instagram. I'm going to be posting Giants content every day over there. And I need you guys to give me a follow over there. So do that. Give me a follow at Marshall Green underscore. I'll put that link in the comments and description of today's show. Welcome into New York Giants now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. I appreciate everybody for taking time out of their busy schedules prior to the weekend to rock and roll with us here to get you caught up on everything surrounding Big Blue. Kayvon Thibodeau, he went on the 7 p.m. in Brooklyn podcast, and he was pretty much asked by Carmelo Anthony, what did he think about Daniel Jones being paid $40 million and $120 million on the contract prior to Saquon Barkley being paid, and Barkley ended up getting the franchise tag. Kayvon, he knows how to run his mouth, that's for sure. This is what he said, quote, what I'm mad about is that Saquon didn't get paid. Because if you look at the game, the tape, Saquon was responsible for at least 30% of our explosive plays the year we won that playoff game. So for me and the integrity of working together and hard work, and we all believe the same things, I feel like Saquon should have got paid first before Daniel Jones. I don't know the back end. Maybe it's a franchise tag. Maybe it's an extension. Maybe it's blah, blah, blah. That's none of my business. I have to focus on me because we see it. As a team, we know who's putting in work or not. And I really want to focus in uh, on that last graphic we just showed you. I just focus on me. You literally are not focusing on me. You just went and counted another man's pockets which is crazy because you tweeted out last year, Kayvon Thibodeau, stop pocket watching. You literally just did that. Also, how stupid do you have to be, Kayvon Thibodeau? You just insulted the man that took you fifth overall and a guy that is going to be deciding how much you can be paid on your next contract. You really just ripped Joe Shane like that? I'm going to be honest, these are the type of things that people had concerns about when Thibodeau was coming out of Oregon and why a lot of teams took him off of the top of their draft board. Look, Kayvon Thibodeau, I'm not a fan of you saying that. I'm really not. Um, keep it in the locker room. Be professional, man. That is, that's just not something you do. That is not something you do. Do you have a problem with Kayvon Thibodeau saying what he said about Daniel Jones. To be fair, he did say he believes in Daniel Jones. And he said he thought it is a good contract. But now you got to walk into that locker room. And you got to look at Daniel Jones, the leader of your football team. Saquon Barkley may not even be here next year. And he's going to know that you actually do not believe in him. Because your words were not as strong as your actions. Let me know. Do you have a problem with Kayvon Thibodeau saying this? For me, you might be right. In hindsight, 2020, the Giants probably should have franchise tagged Daniel Jones and given Saquon Barkley a contract extension. But there's some things you keep inside the walls of that locker room. There's some things you don't say. And you definitely don't say the things you just said on a podcast that is going to get millions and millions of views. And on top of that, focus on you. Like you said, I'm focusing on me. Like you tweeted last year, I'm not pocket watching. You had 11 and a half sacks this year. Really good for a second-year player in this league. But let's go beyond the sack numbers. Kayvon Thibodeau, you have been disappointing somewhat as a top-five pick. Let's take a look at pass rush win percentage via pro football focus. Win percentage equals the percent of wins versus blocking on non-penalty rush pass rush snaps. All right, so it grades how often you could beat the guy blocking you off the line of scrimmage. Well, in 2022, you were ranked as the 68th edge rusher. You won your pass rush sets on just 13% of the time. For a rookie, I'll take it. But then somehow you took a major step back in 2023. You were ranked 100th in the NFL amongst all edge rushers, and you only won your pass rush sets at 10.6%. 
There were six games this year where Kayvon Thibodeau had one or fewer QB pressures. So you had 11 and a half sacks, but for six games, you were nowhere to be found. You didn't make an impact. There were multiple games you didn't even register a tackle this year. Before you go run in your mouth like you're some big dog in New York for the New York Giants, how about you focus on you like you said you did, but you actually aren't doing. You're just simply not that guy yet. Look, if you're an all-pro, if you're soon to be a Hall of Famer, sure, you can go on podcasts and run your mouth and all that type of stuff. But you're a second-year player in this league. You've somewhat been disappointing, and you are the face of the Giants' pass rush, who for the last two years has been at the bottom of the National Football League. Grow up, focus on yourself, and be a better football player. That's what the Giants need you to do. Not to go look in the past and grade Joe Shane's moves as a general manager. Very, very disappointing stuff from Kayvon Thibodeau. Even if he was right, which I think he was, you don't say these kind of things for it to go viral on social media. Coming up next, is Saquon Barkley looking to sign with the Dallas Cowboys in NFL free agency? He and a former Giant and former Cowboy, they were talking about it on Twitter. We'll break it down, but first I got to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Factor. Go to factormeals.com slash giantschat50 and you will get 50% off your first order. I'll make sure all that information is clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. If you're looking for fresh, never frozen, chef prepared, dietitian approved meals that you can eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, that they also have options for keto, low calorie, high protein, vegan, and veggie, you need to try out Factor. Factor is awesome. The food tastes great. I love all the weekly add-ons they have, up to 55 different options. If you've tried the whole meal prepping thing and it didn't work out, give Factor a try. I promise you guys are going to love it. It's factormeals.com slash GiantsChat50, promo code GiantsChat50, and you'll save 50% off your order. Because we love you so much, we'll put all that information clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. Support the show, support the sponsor, be a real one. Shout out to Factor for sponsoring today's New York Giants Now episode. All righty, let's get into it. Barkley and the Cowboys. Could it happen? Yeah, look, the Giants may let Saquon Barkley enter free agency. And I would not be shocked if the Dallas Cowboys were interested. But what I saw today was a little bit funny. Cole Beasley, former Giant and former, I would say, friend with Brian Dable and Joe Shane tweeted, at Barkley and said, hey, oh, I need you to go to Dallas. Getting to run it up on your old team who disrespected you is rejuvenating. And then Barkley responded with a couple of laughing emojis and said, miss my dog. And then Beasley responded, it was fun while it lasted. Ha ha. If you put ha ha, you're kind of a cop, by the way. By the way, I'm just not a fan of that. But I'm not sure that I can stomach Saquon Barkley as a cowboy. Um... That would, be, that would be rough. That would be awful. And I think that Saquon Barkley would be a huge piece to the Dallas Cowboys. To be honest, I can't see Saquon Barkley playing anywhere else. And if I was the general manager of the Giants, you've got a tool at your disposal to keep him on this roster. But Dan Duggan, Giants insider who works for The Athletic, in my opinion, the best Giants beat reporter in the game, he thinks the franchise tag for Saquon Barkley is the worst option. I think it might be the best option. Let's see what he said. A tag is the worst option. Why devote more cap space to him coming off a worse season? $10 million was likely less than his market rate last year. $12 million is probably more. So would it make sense to give that amount in a one-year deal where it all hits the cap? He said he would make what I deem a fair offer to Saquon Barkley. If he rejects it, let him at the open market and ask him to give me a chance to match his best offer. Then make a decision. Why on earth, unless Saquon Barkley absolutely means it, that he only wants to be a New York Giant, why would the guy that you franchise tag last year disrespected him, made him play on a one-year deal, didn't give him a contract extension, give you the benefit of the doubt to match another team's best offer? That doesn't make much sense to me. That's pretty wishful thinking. I would apply the franchise tag. That is what I would do. We'll talk about that in a second. But Pro Football Focus, they put out a Saquon Barkley contract projection. And they have it at two years, $22 million, with $15 million guaranteed. 
And I think that would be a steal of a deal for the New York Giants. But Saquon Barkley turned down $14 million per year last year. Is he really about to sign for $11 million this year? I guess we'll find out. Look, we know that Saquon Barkley is special. We know that he is the engine to this offense. We know that he is the life to this offense. And like Kayvon Thibodeau said, the locker room was upset when he did not get paid prior to Daniel Jones. And I think Joe Shane unknowingly sent a message to that locker room because that is Barkley's locker room. Everyone respects him. He is a great teammate. He's a great leader. But at the end of the day, he's a running back. And he's going to be 27 years old when the season starts next year. And his play has dipped a little bit. Last year, 4.4 yards per carry. This year, less than four. And I know you could say, Marshall, 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 the offensive line was bad. I agree with that. But that's the thing. The running back position is the most dependent position in all of sports. If your offensive line is good, you're not going to be a good running back. Another thing that scares me about Saquon Barkley is his explosiveness has slowed down. I want to give a shout-out to Bobby Skinner of Talking Giants. He tweeted out these stats. They've got an awesome podcast. Check them out. Barkley's 20-plus yard play rate since 2018, it's gone down. And while some of you may say, well, Marshall, that's because of the O-line. That's because he doesn't get the opportunities. What I say is he's getting older. He looks slower. And that's just a fact, and I think he would say that as well. Running backs rarely get better as they age. Yes, you have your Tiki Barber every once in a while where he plays his best football down the stretch. But that's like one out of ten. That's more like one out of a hundred. The facts are the facts and the, stat, the, the data is the data. Running backs do not age well. But I'll say this. I would franchise tag Saquon Barkley or I'd give him a two-year deal. We'll talk about that. What do you want to do with Saquon Barkley? Type R for resign. Type F for franchise tag, or do you think they should tag and trade him? R for resign, F for franchise tag, T for trade. This is what I would do. I would franchise tag him. I understand the reasoning for why Dan Duggan said that is a bad idea. For me, that keeps your best football player on this team on a year-to-year -year basis without having to sacrifice the salary cap health in the future because you never know what could happen for a running back. Maybe you're paying a little bit more now to save yourself a little bit more later. I think that makes a lot of sense. But then I would offer him this deal. I know Pro Football Focus said two years, $22 million. I don't think there's any shot that Saquon Barkley takes that deal. So I'll offer him two years, $25 million, and $15 million guaranteed. That's essentially the franchise tag value this year and next year, and I'll give you a little bit more guaranteed money. I think it's fair. But if Saquon Barkley really wants to be a giant, once a giant, always a giant, only a giant, in the likes of Eli Manning, Michael Strahan, you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit, my man. Got to sacrifice to make things work. He's going to have to do it. Don't know if he will. Talked about yesterday how he could see himself in another jersey, and if he leaves the Giants, he wants to go help a team win a Super Bowl. I'm not ready for him not to be a New York football giant. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because if Saquon Barkley news comes out, we're going to get you guys a video as soon as possible. Your one-stop shop on YouTube for Big Blue all off season long. And remember, give me a follow on Instagram at Marshall Green underscore. Trying to grow my following over there. Just started a new page. Putting out Giants content almost every single day. So give me a follow and let's go Big Blue.